Number 5 gives you this function here. g of x is 6 minus 2x and it asks for the inverse function. Well, that means if you feed it the answer, it will give you the original number. Well, calling the answer to that y, so y equals 6 minus 2x, rearrange that to read x equals, because the input numbers are what you want to get back out. So that would be 2x equals 6 minus y. So x would be, and you've got a couple of forms, 3 minus a half y, or just a half of 6 minus y, whichever you like. So the inverse function would be, this says you put in the answer y, and it'll give you out the original number. But as far as a function is concerned, it just needs something to operate on. So the standard is just to call that an x again. So if you put in an x, it will give you a half of 6 minus whatever you put in. Now, part B simply says for one mark, write down an expression for this. And they're meant to undo each other, they're their inverses. If you put in x, the inverse will give you some number. G will take that number and give you that x back again. It should just be x. You could test it yourself just by putting that through this. But that's the definition of the inverse. The number six from paper one of this 2015 new hire says, evaluate this. Well, you know your laws of logs, you could add them, but not with that multiple in there. So the first thing we'll do is just pop that power back up. Log six to 27 to the power of third. Oh, I'm rewriting here, I don't actually need to write all this again. Now 27 to the power of third is the cube root, which is three. I knew that anyway, it's what's going to happen here. Adding logs, so you multiply the operands at 3 times 12 is 36. And then a simple matter of definition, what power of 6 makes 36? That'll be 2.